I love that scene. Thank you, Tom Svetterberg, for joining us. Not only for joining us, but at like 3 a.m. Copenhagen time. So we are very extra honored that you uh, got up and got it together for this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for doing um, this. Thank you for bringing me here absolutely. in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. Well, let's talk about uh, you know this is this is not your first collaboration as a writer with Tobias Lindholm. You guys have collaborated several times before, but I wonder um, how you is there a common thread for how you you know how or where you come up with ideas for what you're gonna write about? Because this one certainly is outside of the box, as they say. Yeah, this is a bit out, out of the box and, and it took us a while to find the engine for the story. Uh, but at first we just looked at world history and looked at how many fantastic and great accomplishments that, that have been done by people who weren't sober. Uh, and uh, we thought, well, we, we got to look into this and then it, it developed from there. And uh, when we ran into this theory that the human being should have been born with a little bit of alcohol in the blood. We, we found the engine for, for the, for the film. Yes. Now, would you say based on your uh, experience in both countries, do, uh, is, is drinking culture in Denmark any more extreme than in the United States? I mean, we have our own uh, drinking, you know, issues here, but uh, just curious what, how, how you evaluate the situation in Denmark versus here. Um, the, the situation in, in Denmark is more out in the open. I don't think we have more drinking problems. They're just more visible. Whereas in America, you put your, your liquor in, in, in a bag. We, we sit on a bench with it. <laughs> uh, right. But, but, you know, the movie spirit means more than just alcohol. And uh, hopefully the movie elevates from being about alcohol into being about living as opposed to just existing. Uh, it's supposed to be a and, tribute to life and, and not to alcohol, I would say. Now, there are films that, you know, people, of course, see and it changes the way they feel. I wonder, has a film, the, the making of a film ever affected you personally as much as one like this, where you're, you know, it's basically a constant reminder to embrace life at a time when I know you, you were dealing with tough things? Uh, well, as you know, I, I, I lost my daughter, my precious daughter while, while making this movie. And, uh, it has made, it has made this whole situation very, uh, different from anything I've ever tried and hopefully anything I'll ever try again. Um, uh, it, it made this film precious to me as we, we decided to make this movie for her. She died four days into shooting this film. She was supposed to be in it. She loved it dearly. She loved the whole project. And um, making this movie, I guess, kept me from insanity somehow. <laughs> so the, the whole thing uh, is inseparable from, from what we experienced with, with my daughter. Is it also helpful to be working uh at a you know at a, at a challenging time with someone who you appear from everything i've read and heard you know very close with in mads mickelson you guys previously of course did the hunt together and now this and it sounds like you guys are actually also close friends out in the world not just when you're working together of course you know all these people including mads uh knew my daughter since since she was born and we were all uh, in grief and of course, of course, particularly myself and, and my family, and we still are. And, uh, and they carried me through, the actors and the crew of, of this film. Uh, there was so much love on, on the set. There was so much em em embracement. And uh, I hope you can see that on the screen. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, this situation left us all very unguarded and without any any filters or any protection of any kind so i guess what you see is something very raw and very straight from the heart who can tell um on a 
I guess a, a sort of silly note, but I am curious uh, when you've got a direct actors playing people who are drunk, um, what's your policy towards alcohol on the set? <laughs> well, they have to act uh, 12 hours and probably drive a car at some point and be in front of children. So I, I, I didn't expect them to, to drink while working. Um, I, we did have a, a, a sort of a rehearsal period before shooting. We spent a week uh, trying to, to nail this thing about acting drunk. Uh, and in that period of time, I served them alcohol <laughs> because I needed to see them, uh, this particular character under certain influences. And that was a fun time and a lot of hard work, but also uh, some drinking, not crazy drinking, I have to say. I think that uh, it, it also kind of relates to Mads has talked about the way that you sold him on your vision for the film. I wonder if you recall how you how you pitched him this. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I remember showing him some footage of some drunken Russians and stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he kind of enjoyed the, the challenge of trying to act this. <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I put a lot on his plate in this movie. He has to be very tender. He has to be fun. He has to uh, cry and play drunk at very specific levels. And he has to dance. So it's like, uh, I, I really challenged him here. And I think he enjoyed it, actually. It's, it's, it, he was terrific in it. And uh, I guess I just wonder, big picture, you know, you and Lars von Trier and, you know, you guys around the end of the last century, really, already. It's uh, really put Danish cinema, this whole new chapter, on the map. And there was, you know, the whole movement that you guys really uh, led. And, and, and just the, I wonder if you can talk about how Danish cinema, um, just how things have changed in the course of just your career and what this means to the community there to have a film not only recognized in the, category of international films but you're you're up for best director well deserved and deservedly so well D dogma back in the days in the 90s was sort of a a riot against the establishment of uh, of how to make movies uh it was rebellious and it was we put ourselves at great risk by doing it i had phone calls from people saying what are you trying to destroy your career, are you crazy? Uh, and then it became a success and it, it, it lost its spark from becoming a success, I guess. And we had to steer in all sorts of different directions, but it's something that I very often miss. Uh, and yes, it, it was something that strengthened the, the, the society of filmmaking in, in Denmark. But you gotta remember, what we have here is state support for considering film an art form. I would never be able to raise a dime for these movies uh, had it been in a commercial system uh, as in Hollywood. Imagine me coming, I, here's, here's four guys who teaches their students to drink. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Let's do this movie. It's, uh, it's kind of not, it would be a, have been a no-go. So uh, I feel very lucky being part of this system here. Well, we're, and, we're and lucky. And this system creates strength in, 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 in our film society, I guess. 